Next, I'm very excited to introduce a very special person um, to the Carter family. She's known Angel and Aaron since they were nine years old. She's been a tour manager for them, but so much more. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Lori Knight. because it's such an incredible, important nonprofit. Our children are in crisis, and um, you know it's just so meaningful because of Aaron's story. And I, you know, the story began especially with me with Joel Goldman, and so it's kind of full circle tonight because of that. And there are a lot of words I can't also get up here and tell you all the wonderful things because it hasn't always been wonderful. And I think it would be doing a huge disservice to what Angel um, is trying to do with working with on our sleeves if I just told you guys the good stuff. And um, this is hard, but it's been hard. It's been really hard for the last few years. And, you know, I think of words like scary and sad and heartbreaking and love and laughter and pain and hope and hopelessness. And those are all things that I felt over my 25 year journey with Aaron. And um, the last few years have been really hard. And, oh, They've been really hard, and um, he's, you know, he's hurt me deeply. He's hurt people that I love deeply, and he's hurt people probably that I don't know deeply. But I've always tried to lead with compassion. <laughs> Thank you. Because I remember, I always remember this story. We were in Singapore, he was 11. He was doing a press junket for his first album with Jive. And he got off the phone with someone who hurt him deeply. And that was a moment that, it was a life changing moment for me. And I vowed on that day to love him and care about him and try to protect him in this crazy world, adult world of the entertainment industry. And, you know, as he grew up and the trauma of his childhood followed him, the darkness finally took over. And I wish I could speak to all of that, but I'm not a psychologist and I'll leave that up to why he couldn't figure those things out here on earth but I'm going totally off script here and I have to tell you guys, for all of you that have always wondered about my silence or angels or necks, trust me, we've been fighting like hell to we save know. him. We know. We know. We know. 
so hard. We just don't talk about it. It's sad. And we tried so hard, and there were times where Aaron was great. And when he was great, he was great. I do want to tell you a really lovely story about him real quick. When he was again, we were on tour. This is what this is one of the things that made him so special. And he was so magical in this way. We were on tour in Pennsylvania. We were at the venue. And I got a call from a doctor at the hospital. And he said a little girl was in a car wreck on the way to the show with her mom. And she's still in the ER and she has internal bleeding and we can't you know, we're going to have to operate if we can't get this under control. And we've tried all the conventional medical stuff that doctors do. And so now I'm being desperate and trying something unconventional. This little girl keeps talking about Aaron Carter. And am I going to get out of here in time to get to the concert? And Aaron, and oh my God, I'm going to miss the concert. So, you know, could you get him on the phone to talk to her? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll call you back. So I went got Aaron, told him what was going on. And he said, well, let's, I want to go to the hospital. Let's just go. And I asked the promoter, do we have time? And he arranged for a police escort. The next thing you know, we're at the ER. And Aaron goes into the room with this little girl. And we were standing outside. There was a big glass window. I had no idea what he said to her. But it was such a tender moment, like he did. He climbed up in bed with her, put his arm around her. And they just talked for like 20 minutes. And... Um, then it was over and he said, when you get better, I'll fly you out, which he did. And we went back to work. And the next day, the doctor called and said, thank you. We're all scratching our heads here. But 20 minutes after he left, things started turning around and she's on the road to recovery. And I have a million stories like that. He loved, he loved making children that were sick feel better. He, he had a tender way with them and it's one of the things that made him so magical. I know AC is here. I know he is. And I know how excited he is that we're all here, that all his fans are here, or they're watching, that Stanley and Simone and some of the dancers are here and Johnny Wright and Kimball and Cliff and my dear friend Susan Duff and we're, like there's just so many people that have been involved in Aaron's life behind the scenes that you probably never hear about too but Mark Giovi, Mark Giovi's here like it's crazy it's just crazy. It's I mean, it's just wild. And and I know that if we could hear him, he would be saying, "Wow, this is amazing. I have loved you all. I will love you till the end of time." To Nick, if anybody doesn't think that man has done stuff for Aaron, they know nothing about Nick. They know. And Aaron and him started making amends before Aaron's passing. But Aaron would say, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. To Angel, he would say, I'm so proud of you. And I will tell you, Nick, when we were on tour and Aaron was low about something, Nick was the man I called all the time. He would talk to him for hours. He would fly in on his one day off on his own tour to spend six hours with Aaron to make him feel better. Angel was his North Star. Whenever he got too lost, Angel was the person he turned to. And now he's going to be her North Star. And I'm so proud of her too, and I'm so proud of Nick. And I hope you guys enjoy this show because it's amazing. I hope you find peace in it, and I hope the people that are trying to stir up trouble, please stop, because it just makes the trauma worse. Like, Woo! it just does. You guys, thank you. That was great.